In this video, I will demo the steps needed to create your own personal but free Google account so that you can upload your work to a file sharing website like Google Drive and embed it into Canvas discussions for our course. If you have taken a course with me in the past, this is slightly different than the previous requirements because Salt Lake Community College will no longer be a Google college starting with the spring 2022 semester. So you will need to create a new Google account if you don't already have one. If you already have a personal Google account, you do not need to go through the steps to create a Google Drive account. Your Google account is a YouTube account, a Gmail account, a Google Drive account, anything that Google logs in for, you already have access to. So you can skip to the part of the video where I show you how to log in and use Google Drive. So when you use any Google service, and it doesn't matter what service you use, we're gonna use Google Drive, so I'm gonna show you through Google Drive, but when you want to use Google, you need to create an account. So I've gone to google.com slash drive, and I'm gonna click on this option to go to drive. It will ask me what I want to sign in with. You need to create an account if you don't already have one for myself. Make sure you put your name in. Choose a username. Um, let's do Jessica Curran 11111. Create a password. And choose next. Follow all of the steps that you're prompted. So put in an, a phone number. It's optional. I'm going to choose not to do that. We'll, Choose a recovery email address, um, put in your birthday, whatever that happens to be, put in your actual information. I'm going to delete this account. Uh, I'm not going to actually make it. And then choose next. You must accept their terms. And you will have created yourself a Google Drive account. I don't want to show you how to use it just yet because most times you'll have to log in. So in the top right hand corner up here, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. I just need to remember how many ones I put five ones on the email. So the next time you want to use Google Drive, you'll go to drive.google.com or google.com slash drive it takes you to the same place. You'll choose to go to Google Drive. And then instead of creating an account, it already recognizes my account. If your account's not listed, choose use another account and then type in your email address. So two, oops, one, two, three, four, five. You don't have to put the entire email address, just a username and then log in with the password that you just created. And now you're logged into Google Drive. As I'm demoing this, Google Drive is not a mandatory requirement for Art1280. The requirement is that you have to be able to post your work to a file sharing website, and then you have to be able to share and embed it into Canvas. And so the second half of this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. If you prefer Dropbox or Microsoft Office 365, you can use any file storage method that you want, as long as you're able to accomplish the end goal of creating a link to your file and embedding your artwork. So for our class, what I recommend is you create a new folder for the class, Art1280, Photoshop, software. I would create a folder for all of your classes. And if you end up using Google Drive a lot, you might have a folder for Salt Lake Community College. And inside that, you might have a folder for each semester. And then, you know, it, it drives down from there. Our course has many lessons. So I double clicked and I went inside that folder. I would recommend create a new folder for every new lesson. So a lesson, I'm going to call it 00 because it's the intro module, but there are 19 lessons. So you, when you get to lesson one, create a new folder for lesson one. For my demo, I'll use lesson zero or technically I called it unit 00 inside the course. Once you have that folder, you can double click to go inside it. And now we can upload pictures. So you can drag and drop pictures on here if you want. So if we made, let's 
make this smaller. If we made our window smaller, I could find my picture that I want to demo and drag and drop it. I'm not usually a fan of that because it takes work uh, for me to move the windows around. You can also hit this new button in the top left hand corner and instead of creating a new folder, you could do a new file upload and choose the picture. If we go back to my drive, you can see that there is a folder for Art1280. Inside it, there is a folder for for the lesson that you're currently working on. And then now I have a picture. When you upload a picture to Google Drive, you have the ability to set the privacy settings. So once it's uploaded, I would like you to select the image, or if you're in list mode, which is actually what I prefer, select the name of the file and choose the little link in the top right hand corner of the screen. This will show you what the privacy settings are for your image. And so right now by default, I can copy the link to get a link to where the file is stored, but it's restricted. Only people that I've added can see it. We don't want that for our course. We want anyone with the link can see the picture. So you need to change the, the restricted to anyone with the link. And on the right hand side, you want to make sure they're a viewer because you could create like Word documents. They're not called Word documents. That's a, a Microsoft term, but you can create like word processing documents and, and um, data spreadsheets and things on Google Drive, and you could allow other people to edit them. We do not want to do that for our course. We want to make sure that everything we upload has anyone with the link and on the right hand side can be the viewer and then select done. You need to check that setting every single time you post your work to the course. What I would recommend is go back to my drive, choose the master folder, the one for the entire course, hit that link, change the privacy settings of the folder to anyone with the link as a viewer. And then anything that you create inside will automatically have that same setting. So if I created a new folder for lesson one, and then we select that folder and choose the little get link option, automatically anyone with a link is a viewer. So it kind of is uh, top heavy. The, the overall folder will dictate what the default settings of the things inside the folder are. The only time that that's not true is every once in a while, something that's already in the folder will not have those settings. So you just need to double check anything that you may have already created. So I previously created this unit 00 folder. If I select it, I just need to make sure that those new settings, anyone with a link can be a viewer, have automatically moved over into that folder. And then once we're inside that folder, let's put something else in there. Let's uh, grab this guy and drop him or her, you can see that I've now added the image. We can check the settings. And by default, anyone with the link is a viewer. So what I would recommend is that right off the bat, change the privacy settings of the overall folder. Or if you're not comfortable with that, um, at the very least of the folder that you make for your work that you're submitting for each lesson. And then that way, if you forget to double check the images you put inside the folder, it's not the end of the world. Okay, next, once you have uploaded your artwork um, to Google Drive, we need to get it onto Canvas. And I'm gonna demo this with the introduce yourself to the class assignment from the orientation unit. For this unit, you need to attach a file to a discussion to practice attaching files. But I also want you to link to your artwork and embed your artwork. In Google Drive, you will, in order to get a link to your image, you need to select the file and choose the get link option. And then on this green line here, you can click copy link on the right hand side and you've copied the URL that will take you to the image. So if we go to this discussion and if I was to respond to the discussion and paste, which is command or control V on your keyboard. And here's a tip. If the link is not clickable, so this link's not clickable, press the space bar and Canvas will make it clickable. If I was to post this link, um, other members of the class can click on it. It will open in a new tab and then they'll be able to see the artwork that I'm trying to share with the course. However, I want you to provide a link to your files when that is appropriate. It's going to take a minute. 
Um, but I also, I want you to embed your images in the discussion. Students in the class are not likely to click five or six links to go view all of the artwork that you've created, but if it's embedded and they can just scan or scroll through the, the discussion, they're more likely to view your artwork and comment on your artwork. And so instead of providing the URL to the image, I need to come back to my other window. Instead of providing this URL to the image, what I would like you to do is double click on the image or the image file name in Google Drive, and it will kind of pop the image out. In the top right hand corner, there's three dots. Click on that and choose to open in a new window. Now this is the weirdest thing about Google Drive, but it is what is going to allow us to embed the artwork. Click on those three dots again in the new window, and this time, instead of opening a new window, there's an option to embed the item. Click on that, and then copy. So I double-clicked or triple-clicked to select all. You could do Command or Control A to select all, and then Command or Control C to copy. Now you have an embed code, and you can embed your image on a website. So if we go back to Canvas, when you reply to a post, there are a couple ways to embed. If you're a coder, you can look at the HTML. So over in the bottom right hand corner, there's an option for a little bracket. If you click that, you get the HTML code for the post and you can just paste your URL and then you can click it again to go back to the visual editor and you will see that your artwork is now embedded in Canvas. Um, but a recent update makes it even easier. So if you want to embed your artwork, you can insert and then you can choose embedded. Make sure your cursor is blinking wherever you want it to go. And now in this little window, you can paste, you need to paste the code, not the URL, and then hit submit, and it will become embedded in your discussion. It'll take a second. Backing up, one last thing that I do recommend when you're doing this, because kind of the picture takes over and it's hard to see, type everything you have to type for your post. and then make sure everything is typed out and then just put your cursor wherever you want it to go, wherever you want the embedded artwork to go. And with the cursor blinking, then choose insert embedded and hit submit. So for R1280, you have to be able to not only post your artwork on a website like Dropbox or Office 365 or Google Drive, but you have to be able to provide a an accessible link, a link that I can click on or anyone in the class can click on and see your artwork. But most importantly, you need to be able to embed your artwork in a way that students will be able to see it. One way to double check this is if you, I'm going to copy this address. If you, whenever you're logged into your Google Drive account, you can see your own artwork. If you want to make sure everyone else can see it, choose File and then New Incognito Window. In that window, paste your URL. If you can still see the artwork, then everyone can see it. If you get an error that the link is private or inaccessible, then what it means is you have set it to be private. And yes, when you come back to Canvas, you obviously can see it, but nobody else in the class can. The last thing I want to demo in this video is how to create a zipped folder. So whether you're uploading something directly and attaching it to a Canvas discussion or putting it on Google Drive, sometimes it's easier to upload one file instead of a series of files. So if I look at these images here, maybe I want to upload all six of these images that are on my desktop. If I put them in a folder, I'll drag and drop them. If you put them in a folder on a Mac, you right click on the folder, you can choose compress sample images. On a PC, it's very similar. It's usually something like right click, send to compressed file, but you're looking for the phrase compress. You wanna compress the file. When you do that, it will make a copy of your file and it will make it into a .zip. So I have over here my sample images folder. All the images are still there, but by compressing it, it made a copy and it's this .zip. If I was to double click the .zip, it would uncompress it. I would end up with a duplicate of my sample images folder and all of the art still in there. On a PC, you can't double click. Usually you have to right click and choose uncompress. 
um, on a PC, usually if you double click, what it will do is it will peek inside the zip to show you what's in there, but it doesn't actually uncompress it. Once you have a .zip file, then you can upload one file instead of six. So you can go to Google Drive. You can find the folder that you want the zip to be in. Make this smaller. And then you can drag and drop it. And then you have a .zip file that someone could download and then they can uncompress. The pros and cons of this are that the file size is usually compressed and smaller and will upload faster. You don't have to upload six individual files and that kind of thing, but you cannot embed a visual representation of a zip file. So this would be like if you wanted to give me all of your files for a project, you would put them in a .zip, put them on Google uh, Drive, I'll download the .zip. But in addition to it, you might want to upload a PNG or a JPEG copy of your project and then that's the file that you would upload for the class to see. The reason I'm showing you this is because if you want to upload directly to Canvas, um, like I have attached here a .zip to my post, you can attach a file. So when you are typing, you can say, hi, my name is Jessica, I'm excited to take this class. And at the bottom left hand corner, you can choose to attach, but Canvas will only allow you to attach one file. So if I was to choose to attach, where's the sample images file? If I was to choose to attach this green tree image, there's no way for me to choose to add another image. So you would have to make six different posts with six different attachments. And I'm gonna let you know right now that that's not what any of us want you to do. Um, the discussion threads would will be pages and pages long and it will be frustrating. So instead, attach the .zip file. So I've put everything in a folder, I compressed it. So now if I go to my desktop, I should be able to find a .zip file that says sample images and I can attach it. So even though I can only attach one file, I've actually attached six images by attaching this zip. What it will look like to yourself and everyone else in the class, I'll give it a second, is you'll have a regular post, whatever you typed. I, I type, hi, my name is Jessica, and under it, there will be a .zip that someone can download. And then you can open it, and all the files that you wanted to share would be there. When you are required to embed an image, you should embed the image like you're seeing on screen here. But if you have other files that you want to attach, but you don't want them to be embedded, you can attach them as, as a .zip. But the priority should be, if the requirement for the assignment is to embed, the image should be embedded. The last thing that I wanna note is that if you upload files directly to Canvas, like I did with the .zip file, Canvas has a limited amount of storage and at a certain point, you may lose access to your storage and your files. And so it is not a good idea to submit every single thing that you're going to work on in this course through a .zip file. The preferred method is to upload everything to Google Drive and just provide shareable or accessible links so that I can download your files and the embedded image so your classmates can see what you're working on.